There were Jews, then the, the Puerto Ricans, and now the Chinese, and now the all artists are coming back on the Lower East Side. Wax the incibola mit den Kopf in Drehrt! That means grow like an onion with your head in the ground. English curses are so boring. It's always the same scatological stuff, right? All anatomical stuff. It can be much more creative in Yiddish. <laughs> the term macha shefa means old witch. It's not a very nice term. And always through the walls of this apartment, I would hear a din, and then a rumble, and then a larger rumble, and a shaking, and a fury. And I would always hear, macha shefa, macha shefa, fucks me in and then from the other side of the apartment, I would hear, When I'm dead, you'll dance! You'll dance when I'm dead! I heard the same argument for years and years and years. They must have loved each other so dearly. So there's some of these curses. Um, you don't mean it literally, obviously, but just if I get angry at something, I hope it burns. That may sound a little flaky, but um, I've come to believe that Actually, this is true of all kinds of world music. That if you listen to Irish traditional music, you listen to the ornaments and the trills, it sounds like somebody speaking Gaelic. Hey, mama, 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 mama. It's supposed to imitate the sound of a chazan, a cantor singing, or a Yiddish folk singer. They'll, they, when they sing, they'll go, yay, day, day, yay, day, day, with these little hiccups, these little sobs in their voice. If you play a klezmer style, uh, Israel has not treated Yiddish very well all along. They always saw it as a threat. Bard, I am not going to learn ancient Hebrew. The differences between Hebrew and Yiddish is that they are totally unrelated languages. Um, the only similarity, basically, is that they use the same alphabet. Yiddish uses the Hebrew alphabet, now called the Yiddish alphabet, because it's developed differences. Yiddish has a number of borrowings from Hebrew, and Hebrew has a fair number of borrowings from Yiddish, but Hebrew is from the Semitic family, and Yiddish is basically in its structure an Indo-European language. There are three major dialects. The usual division is, within Eastern Europe, three dialects. Polish Yiddish, Lithuanian Yiddish, Ukrainian Yiddish, and then historically in Western Europe, which would mean Germany, Switzerland, Holland, uh, and the neighboring countries, a little bit of France, um, there was a dialect called Western Yiddish, which is there's very little left of now. Some people have heard of Litvax and Galiciana. Buying meat. Uh, in Lithuanian Yiddish, people would say Kaif and Fleisch. In Ukrainian Yiddish, they would say Koif and Fleisch. And in Polish Yiddish, they would say Koif and Fleisch. So the most obvious difference between these dialects is the pronunciation of the vowels. There are many, many others. There are grammatical differences, um, but this is the one that jumps out at you. At home, we were not encouraged, but ordered to speak only Yiddish. The reason being that my folks were older when they got married. They were what they called Fahadovit. They worked so hard that they really didn't have the freedom to attend classes in the evening and learn English. And they were afraid that they would lose their communication ability with their children. How it is that Jews in so many countries came to speak languages that were related to the local language, but not the same. Um, that's almost as hard as finding a birth certificate. We know from records of the Crusades that Yiddish was already a functioning language. In the good old days in Europe when most people were illiterate. The few people who could read and write would have used Latin, but they would still have spoken German or French or English or whatever their local language was among themselves. A tchotchke ring, a plaything, a, a kind of a, a silly little thing. Wine you can cut with a knife, you can schneid and with the mess so thick and cut it with a knife. For goodness sakes, uh, it's like asking what's the significance of English. What did Yiddish ever do to you? Zos Leben und sein gesund. May you live in health. <laughs>